So I got the Tildwick Tarot a couple of months ago. I tried to do videos on the deck, but the imagery is so subtle that, uh, you know, I had to delete those videos because the, it just wasn't showing through well. I'm going to try it one more time because the deck is absolutely beautiful. And it was recommended to me by a dear friend here on YouTube. And it is every bit as beautiful as he said it would be. So let me show you the box here. And that is the front of the box. And that has the Fool, and the back of the box has the World card. And you get a gorgeous deck. Here is the backing. Uh, the deck is beautifully gilded. The quality of the deck is outstanding. And this is, the, this is what you get with the deck. Okay, so there is no little white book. Um, it is really just you and the deck. And this deck is very contemplative. And it is a good meditative tool, so you really don't need the book. You don't need any book. It's just perfect the way it is. So, the premise of the deck. Let me just first say there are no people in the deck. The Tildwick, I guess, would be a, uh, an imaginary mansion with 78 rooms. And each room representing the archetype of, of the card and what that person maybe would have in their room. Okay, so let's take a look at the Fool, and I'm just hoping that you'll be able to see, you know, um, the imagery a little bit here. So here is the Fool, and this would be the Fool's room, one corner of the Fool's room. So here we have, um, well, you see a painting here with a jester, and there's a mantle, and on the mantle there is a dog here, and I like this here very much. It is an artist's model that it can be... Uh, Bended and is very malleable and it is faceless. So that is a really good uh, symbol for the fool there. Um, the magician. Now on his, his table here, he has a representation of each of the suits lined up here. And then this is actually not a painting. It's more of a box with um, like puppetry in there. So you can see, you start to see that each, you know, the rooms all have uh, a representation, very clear symbolism of the card. And, you know, if you, when you walk into someone's home, you can really get an idea of their personality, their likes and dislikes, maybe from looking around at, at their place. So here is the high priestess, and you'll see a statue here. Um, you know, that might be Isis, I'm not sure. These will put you in mind of the pillars. And this here... Um, it looks like a dial, but it's actually representative of um, the cycles, the moon cycles and, and whatnot. <laughs> now, the Empress card is outside, so there are a lot of cards that are outside in, in garden settings. And this is one. Uh, it's very beautiful and lush, and you'll see a relief here, which I would think, you know, is maybe Diana. And... The Emperor, I like this very much. So you'll see um, a bust here on, on the desk and the globe and all the books in the background there. I like that so very much. It's a wonderful Emperor card. The uh, Hierophant is called the Pope. And we have statuary here. So the design work is really beautiful, and it's very elegant. And um, here is the lovers. That's a painting. Now here is the chariot, which I think is such a strange uh, choice for the chariot. But you'll see the statuary here, and these sort of, you know, sort of sphinx sphinxes. Actually, they're winged. Could be Griffins. The Justice card I like a lot. Now Justice is number eight. And you'll see on, on the table here, uh, there are scales. And there's a mirror there. And I really like this here with the cut flowers on each side. So rather than bringing in, you know, swords or knives, the cut flowers just give such... Um, you know, really a good idea of, of that justice card. And uh, the hermit. Again, we are outside here. Uh, 
and the wheel. So if you can see, again, it's, it's outside and there's a little bit of water dripping and spinning the wheel here. Okay, and here is, um, okay, this is uh, the strength card. I think I have them out of order a little, but the strength card is number 11, and it's called Fortitude. You see a bird here and a lion, a relief of a lion. I mean, I really like this card as well. And here is the um, Hanged Man, another great card. Like this, the stillness here at the bottom. And this is death. So I don't know if you can see, uh, there is an organ here. And there is a painting here. And the painting has a skeleton holding a scythe. And there's a clock up top. So time is running out. Okay. And temperance. Really beautiful. Every card is really beautiful, very beautiful in this deck. Here's the devil. So we have, um, you know, the room is dark. We have a mirror. I think it's an obsidian mirror, dark and reflective. And um, some decoration on the mirror, which I think this is it's like a goat, a horned goat. The tower is so beautiful in person. You'll, you, you would be able to see that the glass here on this painting is shattered. Uh, the star. So once again, we're outdoors. And if you can see, there is a star here. And water. The moon. There's a mirror here, but it is, you know, a light color. Um, once again, very reflective. We have the crust crustacean here on the bottom. Kind of a silvery tone to it. The sun, of course, has a very golden tone. With the sunflowers, you'll see the, the rug symbolizing the sun and the painting up here. Um, judgment. A little bit hard to see here, angel. And the world card. See the platonic solids on the bottom. So I'm just going to show a few, just a, a few of the minors because again, um, it's just not gonna show very well on the camera, the deck. Can be hard to see even in person you you need good lighting and good eyesight to work with this deck so let's um let me just show you a few here is the seven of staves staves are uh, wands and the stave suit kind of has like a coloring of that suit all of the suits give some color that would be associated with their element so here we see the soldiers all lined up for the seven of staves and the four of staves, um, you know, giving the idea of celebration, also creativity. The four brushes standing up and the palette here, very colorful. And uh, the two of cups. So this is just a beautiful garden, very peaceful and balanced. And, you know, these cards, when, I, when you work with them, you can just imagine you know, walking through the gardens or, or spending time in that room and in your mind's eye thinking about what else is in the room and really just absorbing all of the symbolism and imagery. So here is the two of coins, uh, balance and, um, you know, with the pulley and the plant. And I'll show you a few of the swords. I like the sword suit a lot in this deck. Here is the three. So in this here we, in this card, we see the window has been um, blocked off. It's all stone and brick behind that window. So no entry, uh, giving, you know, it's certainly idea of sorrow. Uh, the eight. And 
And here is the Four of Swords. Healing, right? Infirm. And the Ten of Swords. Now, I've had the deck, as I said, a couple months, and I still can't tell what all the things are in some of the cards. Um, but this is a very interesting card. So on the table here, well, there is a sheet of paper. This, I do not know what this is. But here, I believe it is a straight razor. And there is no artwork on the wall, but it appears that there are, you know, like um, swipes of blood on the wall. So interesting for the Ten of Swords. Now, uh, for the court cards, um, he has them structured as far as the elements that the court represents. So you'll see this in other decks, like the Orbifold, um, all of the... All of the pages will have an element of earth in addition to their own suit. So here's the page of swords. So you'll see all of the pages are in, they have a, a, out, out in the small garden. They have a small garden. Here is the page of um, coins. You see a very fresh spring-like garden here. And all of the pages will have a small garden. All of the knights, of course, uh, the knights are represented by uh, the fire suit, and they all have a beautiful fireplace. That is the knight of coins. And here is the knight of cups. And it's a fireplace there. And then you'll see in the knight of um, staves, it, the fire is just... You know, you see a lot more brightness and strength in um, picking up the colors of the fire element. So all of the queens, of course, will have a, a carry an element of water. And so you'll see ponds. It's very beautiful. Here is the queen of staves. A little pond there. And here's the queen of swords. Harp, water, and some growth here. It's really beautiful. And of course, all of the kings are going to carry an element of air. So let's see here. Um, here they are. And they all have a large window. So here is the King of Cups. You'll see a portrait as well in all of the kings. King of Swords portrait and a window. Oh, and the, you know, all of the kings also have the checkerboard flooring, by the way. And here is the king of um, coins. Window, portrait, flooring. So it is, um, have I said, it's an absolutely gorgeous deck. I enjoy it very much, and I hope you were able to see the images somewhat. If you go to the site, which I'll link below, you'll be able to see them a little more clearly. So thank you, everyone, and I'll see you soon. Bye.